Hi, and welcome to this Grand National 2021 race analysis. Now, before I get started, just below this video or next to this video, you are going to find a link. And if you click on that link, you're going to be able to download the slides of a live stream session I held uh, with the stats for the 2021 Grand National. Now, due to some technical issues of the company that runs our live streams, uh, which I understand have now been sorted, I had to put a pause on that live stream and I'm recording this video to finish off the full analysis. But please do grab a copy of those slides. They have some of the biggest stats and trends for the 2021 Grand National uh, at Aintree. So now I'm going to jump in. I'm actually going to do the analysis of the race as well. But I have made a copy uh, just here of some of those stats and trends. And I'm going to use those. Now, the proviso that I would like to say before I get into some of those stats and trends is that we should use stats and trends not as uh, a way to define contenders. So not as, uh, for example, uh, because eight of 11 of the last winners uh, were aged between 9 and 11, should we only consider horses aged between 9 and 11 or because um, you know, 10 of 11 of the last winners 10 out of 11 of the last winners um, had previously run over um, chase races at least three times so we shouldn't only consider the horses that have previously run at least three times over chase races what we want to do is we actually want to use them instead to define logical uh, parameters, logical information about how we should look into the race. So, for example, we know that horses which are favour and short in the market generally don't perform well in the Grand National, and that's because these horses, their odds don't represent their real probability of winning. Why is that? Because in a race of 40-plus runners, where a lot of those runners are some of the best horses around the world, it's almost impossible for any person to truly assess the odds. So in this scenario, in this unique scenario, the market is not our friend. The shorter odds horse in the market do not necessarily have the stronger chance of winning. Uh, certainly not as strong a chance of winning as their odds may represent. Also, we know that for this very long distance race, the horses that perform best are horses that have run well over long distances previously, over three miles plus. Because of the amount of jumps in this race, we know that the horses that do best are the horses that have proven they can run well over jumps, carrying similar weight to what they are carrying in the Grand National. The same goes for the ground condition. Um, so all of these are logical pieces of information, but we rather than using them as um, black and white rules, we're using them to build a picture up. And that's kind of what we really, really want to be focused on today. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the Grand National Race. Um, I'm already in Race Advisor Pro here. So I'm going to come to Saturday 10th tomorrow. I'm going to load up Aintree here, 5.15. And we're going to get this race card loading up here. And we can see the huge amount of runners that we've got. So I've already marked a couple eliminated there. I'm just going to put them back in for now. But here are the current number of horses in this race. 40 runners racing currently. Okay. So, where do we begin with this amount of runners? Well, we're going to start with the odds, okay? Now, I know that I have just said that the odds are not the best place to necessarily um, begin, but we're talking about the short end of the market. And what I need to do now is I need to try and trim this market down. I need to try and find a way to reduce this field of 40 to something that is actually manageable, something that is actually uh, possible for us to analyze. So I'm going to start by removing horses that have a rank outside of odds, such as um, odds of 95, 150, um, 85, 120, 80, 85. And this isn't to say that some of these horses may not win, may not contend, but at such high odds, they're far less likely to and I wouldn't be happy risking my own money on a horse at such high odds. So definitely red, 100, 160, 80, 150, 140, 
85. For the moment, I'm leaving in the horses that are in the 50s, which is a lot higher than I would normally go, but I just want to see what that leaves us with. Um, so I'm just going to keep removing these very high odds horses. And you can see that we start to come down to a little bit more of a manageable field here. A little bit more uh, of a field that we can actually do well in. Now the next thing I'm going to look at is this DSLGR column. This is days since the last good race. This tells me how long it's been since the horse last had a good race. And again, I want the horse to have run well recently. Certainly kind of within the, this season, um, but preferably within the last kind of three months or so. Um, so that takes out immediately one horse here um down here annabelle fly i'm going to take rid of that horse um but also we've got a few that are kind of on the cusp we've got milan native or we've got potter's corner but i'm going to leave those in for now uh, and maybe we'll come back to look at day since last race rather than day since last good race when we when we really want to get to that and you'll see that actually the main focus at the moment isn't about finding the strongest horses the main focus at the moment is how can we remove the least likely horses to perform well in this race because these are the horses um, these are the horses that we want to get rid of the easiest horses to find so that we can then narrow our focus and actually have a chance of finding some of the strongest runners in this race um, okay, so I'm actually going to open up a, a different race card here. I'm just going to open up my overview race card. Um, and, and the reason for that is it's got a little bit more data on it, it's got a little bit more information. Okay, so I've got this race card here, and I'm just going to scroll over until I come to day since last good race. Now, there's a lot of numbers on this race card, and I don't recommend that anybody creates a race card with this many ratings. You only actually need somewhere between 3 and 10 ratings on a race card. I just use this to have everything in place, so I'm not jumping about while I'm recording videos or doing live streams. But you do not need this many ratings on a race card for day today analysis you only need somewhere between three and ten okay um but what i'm interested in here is days since last one okay and this is this is also super important because you can see here we've got some horses that haven't won for a very very long time uh we've got this one down here 470 days potter's corner i'm going to take that runner out um coming back over we've got 727 days class conti hasn't won for that long um, I've got 882 days for Discorama. Um, I've got coming down here 669 days for Far Class. Um, and keep going here. We've got one more down here 455 days here. Kimberlite Candy. Now I'm going to hold off on that because I can see there's a season change there and actually there potentially was a good race uh, 127 days ago. And again, we've got 466 days since Borough State last had a winning race, but it has had some good races recently. So now we've really narrowed down this field. Now we've got some horses that actually uh, we can seriously look at in detail. They range in odds from kind of around 6.8 to 55. So there's quite a range there across the market. And now we're going to try and work out which of these um, is going to be the best now usually what I would do at this point is I would jump into the ratings and actually try and go through the ratings first to find the strongest horses but I'm going to do it slightly differently here and uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open each of these horses race history uh, I'm going to look to see whether they perform well over long distances, chase races preferably, whether they perform well in a higher class, and whether they perform well over good to soft ground, three miles plus. Okay, and uh, any that are, I'm going to simply come back here and I'm going to highlight them like this, so that I can just I can just get this um, this uh, knowledge of kind of what's going on and which look to be strong. Okay, so we're starting here with Acapella Bourgeois. 
Um, and first of all, we can see um, that actually it's been a while since this horse raced in a very high class race, coming back to Cheltenham in 2017, but back there on good to soft ground, 61 lengths behind the winner. Now, since then, we've had a three miler here where the horse fell. We've had a three miler hurdle here over soft ground, beaten 78 lengths. And then we've had some recently some three miners, but actually beaten 22 lengths in the 60k race on heavy ground. Um, one on soft to heavy, carrying 11.8, but only a 17k race. So there's nothing hugely here for a cappella bourgeois that interests me. Coming back, I'm going to look at any second now next. Um, so let's find any second now. Here we go. Okay, now looking at this horse's race history, we've got uh, some higher class races down here, 2020, 2019. Um, three miles, 50 yards is interesting. 110K race at Leopardstown, soft ground. Um, now, unseated the rider, so not so great. More recently, we've got this 54K race and this 60K race, both over three miles. Beaten 29 lengths, pulled up, soft, heavy. Uh, coming back down to 2019, we've got a 270K race at Fairy House, Chase, three miles, five furlongs, good to yielding, so that's gonna be similar to good to soft. Fell. So again, a number of concerns rearing the head here. Leopardstown, three miles good, beaten 9.8 lengths. So again, there's not much really here that's making me want to um, focus on any second now. So I'm going to come down next to Bristol de May. Let me come back here. We're going to open Bristol de May now. Um, now coming in here, we're coming back to the Haydock race, 90k, three miles, heavy ground, one by two lengths uh, to Clans de Abo. Uh 352k race at Cheltenham, not long ago, three miles, two furlongs, soft beat and 18 lengths by Al Boom. Um, but still, if we if we hover over here, we can uh, get some in running comments to see that the horse was prominent but got outpaced. Uh, but we got a lot of high class races in this horse's recent history: 113k, 112, 352k, 142k, 113. So all pretty strong, all long distance. Uh, some of the horses perform well, beaten 1.5 lengths here. Um, We've got a bit of falling, but not many. One, this one by four lengths. Um, coming down here, we've got some long distance. So what we're seeing here is what I'm looking for is some indication the horse has potential. This horse definitely does have potential. It looks possibly like this horse is going to prefer softer ground. So the softer the ground gets, the heavier the ground gets, maybe in Bristol de May's favor. But I'm going to highlight Bristol de May here before coming back and looking at Burrow Saint. Um, okay, so next we're going to look for Burrow Saint down here. Now coming into this horse, we can immediately see there's not very many high class races. We've got this 2019 chase race at Ferry House where it won 1.75 lengths, pardon me, and the ground was good to yielding. Carried 10.8 in that race. Now today carrying 10.13. So that is an increase. Um, is that increase going to have an impact? Quite possibly, particularly if the ground gets softer, yes. But over four miles, it's going to have an impact. Uh, so we've got to bear that in mind. Um, however, this horse obviously has potential over long distance, and we've got this race here, but it was much lower class, a 9K at Clonmel, where on heavy ground carrying 11-12 with a tongue strap, um, was beaten by 45 lengths, but did come second. Um, it's showing potential there. So there is a possibility that Burrow Saint may be able to perform in this race. So I'm just going to mark that horse as well okay uh coming down to cloth cap next i'm just going to run through these horses like this and highlight those from that potential list that we made some that may actually be able to contend Okay, again, not many not many high class races here, but this one on the 28th of November, about the closest, three miles, one furlong, good ground, one by 10 lengths, and again, this is a good indication. Had a good race out last time, but a much lower class, and almost around three miles on good to soft, carrying 11.2. So I'm also gonna mark cloth cap, particularly considering this horse is currently carrying 10.5. 10.5, so the weight is definitely in cloth cap's favor. Uh, Kimberlite Candy, next. 
Uh, and, and you can see we're doing this pretty quickly. We're just trying to get an idea, a feeling of what may happen here, of which horses may be suitable. I mean, they do say the Grand National is like uh, the lottery of horse racing because literally anything can happen in this race. Like You never know what is going to happen and it can happen instantly the second they start. Um, but we've got some higher class races more recently here, but we had a pulled up one at Ferry House, uh, contended one where it came two and a half lengths behind the winner at Aintree for 84k, three miles. Uh, one where it came second but was quite far behind um, at Aintree on the 5th of December. But what this has shown is actually the horse knows the track it can perform on the track. The issue possibly here was the increase in weight from 10.4 from its last race at Aintree to 11.6. So look at Kimberlite like Candy now carrying 10 10, so a little bit closer back to that previous way. Possibly got some merit there. Moving on to Lord Du Mesnil. Um, here is this runner here again, much lower class racing until recently. Um, we've got though, however, some good races over three miles, five furlongs, three mile, five furlongs soft, only beaten 2.25 length in a 74k race, three mile, four furlongs heavy, only beaten one and a half lengths in a, in a um, three mile, four furlong race. Uh, and here, however, three mile, six furlongs, carrying 11, two on soft. 85k race beaten nearly 20 lengths but started to pull that back the last time out carrying 11.6 so again Lord de Mesnil has shown there is some potential only carrying 10 to 6 today okay so that's also quite interesting right magic of light moving on okay magic of light here we are now, Magic of Light, uh, looking down here, we've got this 500k race at Aintree back in uh, 2019 at the festival. Four miles, Grand National race, good to soft, 10-11, beaten 2.75 lengths by Tiger Rob. 2019, coming back today, probably coming back to seriously challenge. Recently, we've been beaten, um, but we have been running. We ran actually the 19th of March, uh, most likely going to be an exercise run there, two mile four phone. And prior to that, though, we had a couple of races at lower class, pretty much three miles, soft ground, um, one by eight lengths, beaten by eight lengths, um, back to back, basically. Uh, well, back to back, there was uh, three or so weeks in between, three to four weeks in between. But, but so again, Magic of Light can't be discounted. There's definitely potential there. Um, moving on to Milan Native. Right, Milan Native. Again, uh, only recently we've got some higher class races here. We got pulled up, beaten 36 lengths, beaten 19 lengths, beaten 25 lengths in the 17k race. So immediately there is nothing much there holding out for us for Milan Native. And we're going to move on to Manila Times. Okay, moving on to Manila Times. Uh, down here. Moving on to Manila Times here, um, we can immediately see 75k, 84k, 90k. These are the big races. Two mile, five furlong, three miles, two miles, five furlong. The three mile race, soft ground, beaten 4.5 lengths. Pretty good uh, for a 10k race, carrying 10, 12. Today, carrying 10, 6. Okay, uh, we got one win, 0.5 uh, of a length, so and that was over 13k race. But the yielding to soft race, two mile five furlongs, beaten 67 lengths. So again, this horse has shown it can run long distance races. It can run in slightly higher class races. It can run on soft ground. So there, there is some potential here for Manila Times. We're just going to highlight it. Now we've got two left, Mr. Malarkey and Taking Risks. Uh, looking for Mr. Malarkey. Um, coming down here, Mr. Malarkey, we load up. Now, this horse has got a history of higher class races going back to 2019. We see these three mile races down here. One was on soft beat and 18 lengths, but came fourth. Coming up, we've got this Newbury race, 142k, three mile one furlong on the 30th of November. Good to soft ground again, but beaten 11.3 lengths. Three mile race, we've got one winner here. Two lengths, 57k at Kempton. Apart from that, everything's looking pretty poor. There's one other winning race here, Ascot 34k 
otherwise not looking great so for me there is some outside potential here but generally is showing it's unlikely to happen finally we look at taking risks and that's the last one that we're going to look at for the moment taking risks now taking risks Again, we can see not really a history of high class racing, but more recently, obviously been trying to prepare and coming in here. Uh, both two mile seven furlongs recently, effectively not far off the three mile one, one by 1.25 lengths, one beaten by 6.5 lengths, but in significantly lower class race. However, there is an indication here, the softer ground, may be preferable for this runner. Carrying 11.2 there, carrying 10.7 today. Coming back to slightly um, weaker races, we've got this Newcastle 40k race here, one by three quarters of a length, and this Ayer 122k, sorry, Air, I should say, 122k uh, back 13th of April, 2019 three miles seven furlongs so not far off the four miles good ground carrying 10 one and it won by four lengths one by four lengths so taking risk possibly however maybe carrying a bit too much weight today uh, and could be outclassed but potential now you can see that we have these horses highlighted here and this starts to give us a little bit of insight now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start putting back on some of these horses using ratings to see if we can actually make a decision on which may be the horses for us to follow um and i'm going to do it just looking purely at numbers so i don't want to look at the horse names anymore i just want to look at numbers now okay so looking at the PFP, I can see down here, um, Magic of Light down here is significantly stronger than the rest. Bristol the May sitting up there as well. Um, however, they've all got a good chance, to be honest. They've all got a strong chance. As we know, they can all contend. But these two, uh, Magic of Light, Bristol de May, taking the edge there looking at average competitive pfp and average competitive speed so this is like an average competitive form and an average competitive speed um looking at the highest figures here average competitive form we see the same two horses here as well the same two horses bristol de may and magic of light but lord de mesnil comes in as well so does taking risk down at the bottom so we're remembering these horses names looking at the average competitive speed we see the same horse Horses again, Bristol de May, um, Bristol de May, Lord de Mesnil, and Magic of Light predominantly there um, leading the pack. Um, consistency, I'm going to move on from because that rating is not going to be very effective in this particular race. Uh, neither I do I feel will speed projection be particularly um, relevant to this race. However. Um, speed average over the ground condition will be and of course we've got the horse that we know has run magic of light already in this race showing well in the distance one for speed but the only one so nothing to really compare it with however the same horse again performing well up here however there's a couple more that drop in we also get burrow saint and cloth cap kind of coming in there but still the strength looks to be magic light bristol de may um, 5278 puts Magic Light there again as well and doesn't really highlight any of the others. We've already used Day Since Last Good Race, Day Since Last Win. Um, and now I'm going to move over to these PFP LR factors. LR is the points made in the last race. LR2 is last two races, last three races, last four races. And what we're looking for is a general improvement here. And as you can see, Magic of Light down here just uh, blanks. So just negative, negative, negative. So that's really not a good indication. Bristol de May bouncing around a little bit, which is a bit concerning. Um, however, we've got this horse here uh, and this these two horses in the middle looking strong and um, Minella Times looking strong as well. Taking risk at the bottom doing okay but manella times really coming into its own now some concern really for magic of light so where does that leave us bristol de may looking okay manella times kind of creeping in with some possibility taking risk maybe some possibility a bit of concern over magic light but sitting there with an outside chance kimberlite candy didn't really show anywhere cloth cap didn't really show anywhere 
this reduced the field to kind of about six runners. And now it's about how do we bet them? Now, personally, Lord Mesner, I would probably remove considering the odds are still up at 55 and I don't like betting of that high, which reduces the field down to five potential runners. Now, for me, from these runners, there are some concerns looking at those PFP points for Magic of Light, but this horse does seem to be strong in other areas. This horse could be, could be good for uh, an extra place market bet. Manila Tires creeped in there, and I actually quite like the look of that horse. I think there is potential there, um, and we could see possibly what is happening. Taking risks. Uh, so Manila Tires could be maybe uh, an each way, or possibly an 80-20 bet like that. And I think the same would be for Bristol de May. Now, Borough Saint only dropped in once or twice, and only for a couple of factors, so I'm actually gonna remove Borough Saint, leaving these four horses. Magic of Light for an, uh, an extra place market bet. Manila Times for um, possibly uh, an each way or an 80-20 bet. Bristol Domain and taking risks for more like the place market as well. So that's how I would be looking here. Now, before we just wrap up, I'm going to open the speed graphs. Now, these speed graphs are going to be heavy. They're going to have so much data on, as you can see here. But that's absolutely fine, because what I actually want to do here is I want to put in um, good to soft initially and now i need to put the distance in in yards now um we work it in yards because we uh that's the smallest measurement that we have in a race so i'm not quite sure what three miles is in yards so i just come to google and i do three miles um in yards and it just tells me straight away it's 5280 yards so i can come in here and put 5280 in the distance as um the minimum and then i'm going to filter the race and that changes that graph as you can see massively uh we start to see uh kind of a better picture of what's going on we've got this horse up here annabelle fly actually looking good bristol de may as well coming in which is good give me a copper uh we haven't marked that horse everything else much of a muchness really here milan native sitting there uh, any at the bottom that we're not considered with not really so everything uh the only horses that we may want to have another look at is give me a copper and annabelle fly uh, and i'm just doing this to have a quick check overview so coming down here i'm going to bring annabelle fly back in and i'm going to bring in give me a copper okay perfect now, Annabelle Fly and Give Me a Copper, both at the bottom. Give Me a Copper, currently odds of 80, which is too much for me, so I'm going to remove that. Annabelle Fly sitting in here. A strong PFP rating, that's a form base rating. A strong average competitive uh, form rating as well. But really quite, uh, actually not too bad. So I was going to say quite weak on the, on the average competitive speed, but that's actually not the case. Um, some concerns over consistency, but we know that rating is not going to be so effective in this race. Speed ongoing, again, potentially looking strong and obviously has raced over this distance before. Um, day since last good race is the major concern, 399 days and 1,200 days since the last win. Uh, and, and the points here also pretty negative. Uh, so there is some concern there. Coming back over here, we're going to have a quick look at Annabelle Fly to see if we want to consider this horse as well. Uh, and we can see Leopardstown was 143k back on the 2nd of February, last 94 lengths beaten, 103k, 64 lengths beaten. Recently, uh, not much. Coming back to Aintree 2019, uh, 16 and a half lengths beaten. Um, Cheltenham 352k uh, doing well so going back to 2019 doing well really didn't race in 2020 um, so Annabelle Fly hasn't got anything that is looking for it but this may be one to watch the market on because it's very likely this horse is being targeted for this race has been targeted for this race and could perform well so we'll keep an eye on the market currently sitting at odds of 34 if it looked like this horse was coming in a bit i might consider this horse as well as an 80 20 uh on the basis that this horse may be targeted for this race but i do have some concerns there okay so this is uh my overview in summary i like manila times 80 20 or a form of each way bet
Um, Magic of Light, uh, probably for the extra place market. Taking risk, Bristol de May for a place bet most likely, possibly an 80-20. Annabelle Flyer be keeping an eye on seeing what happens, seeing how the market forms up uh, and possibly coming in if that horse looks like it's been targeted to the Grand National. I would love to know who you're going to be following today, which horses you like, whether you like the ones the same as me, whether you like different runners and how you're going to be betting on them. So please, please do leave me a comment. Leave me a comment below uh, and let me know. If you're not yet a Race Advisor Pro member and you would like to become one, please go to raceadvisor.co.uk forward slash join where you can find out all the information about what is involved in a race advisor pro membership and becoming part of the community there good luck for the grand national enjoy the last day of the festival have a wonderful weekend and i'll see you very soon goodbye for now